Um, the session will be a talk about uh, checking your similarity index with turn it in. Yeah, turn it in. You've heard right. Um, so if you've submitted a report to turn it in and received a high score, um, then you would probably contact our next presenter. Um, so Mr. Morris Samuels, um, I see you online there. Uh, Morris, um, while I read your two page bio, uh, bio, can you maybe set up and put up your um, your presentation so long? Mr. Samuel. Yusuf, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> can you all hear me? I hope so. <laughs> yes, we can hear you loud and clear. So <laughs> let me just go through the two page bio here. Um, <laughs> oh, two pages. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Morris, um, Morris's affiliation with the university started back in 1994. Um, so he's been a long time here at the university. But um, back way then, um, he enrolled for a BA in, in the arts a degree for a BA. So after completing his undergraduate studies in 1998, um, he enrolled for a postgraduate diploma in community and population studies and that was in the Department of Sociology, and that was also at the beginning of 99. But during that year, Morris also became involved with various social research projects within the then research unit um, in the department, known as DataDesk, until he graduated with a diploma at the end of that year. So in 2001, he was employed as an administrative assistant to the course um, coordinator for the academic development unit in the English department that was funded by the Desmond Tutor Education Trust. Um, and in 2004, Morris started working as an admin officer with a focus on providing support for the then learning management platform called WebCT. Yes, as Morris, you take us back, back, way back with WebCT. So that was then in the Center for Teaching and Learning in 2007. He graduated with a BPhil degree in the Information and Knowledge Management. So as a strategic outcome of an external evaluation audit um, process in 2012, the then Web Studies support team was moved under the management of the newly established Center for Learning Technologies. And um, in 2020, so that was um, right slap bang in the middle of the pandemic, Morris was appointed team manager for the now known learning technology support. So, Mr. Samuels, welcome to the session. Um, we're looking forward to a great session. And um, yeah, so I think the people with high scores are looking forward to what you're going to say. <laughs> so Good over afternoon. to you, Sam. Thank you. Uh, Morris, before, <laughs> sorry, before you, before you start, I just want to mention that people, um, if you want to uh, um, uh, put questions, put it in the chat. We communicate via the chat. Uh, Morris, I don't know if you want to... Um, put on your video um, while you talk, it's up to you, uh, but we will entertain questions. We have a quick Q&A after the session as well, but um, would you rather prefer that people ask questions um, at the end or do you prefer um, that's all up to you um, during your session? Yes, please. If it, um, I love interaction um, okay. because okay. We, are, we are used to interaction during okay. during training sessions or, or workshops or orientation sessions. But if we can, um, yeah, um, not too many questions during. Um, so please reserve the the bulk of the questions um, at the for at the end um, of the session, um, please. Uh, thank you very much, Yusuf, for the introduction. Um, I just realized what, there's just one um, error in that mm. um, <laughs> in that introduction is that the um, our, we actually moved to the Center for Learning Technologies before 2020 already. Um, that was in 20, yeah, 2000. I, I can't remember. I think it was 2016. Tembalani, um, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Um, colleagues, um, if you can just um, mute your microphones, please. Um, Thank you, um, Morris. So yeah, um, I got this from somebody. So <laughs> I'm no, going to pick Mr. Lewis. 
<laughs> okay. So it but over to my you. Part. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but over to you. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Uh, um, again, just a good, a very good afternoon to everyone. Um, Yusuf has already um, indicated what the session is going to be about. Um, pretty sure that the majority of you are going to hear things that you've already heard before. Uh, so nothing mind blowing. I'm just going to confirm <laughs> what you already know and and hopefully uh, you will get uh, something new out of the session um, as well. So please um, bear with me um, with that in, in that regard. Uh, can I just check? Um, you can see my slide. Everybody can see my slide. Yeah, yes, Morris, we can see it. All right, great. Let's let's get going. Right, as I've um, said, but I've already um, mentioned what this, you already know what the session is about. So I will approach the session um, in the following in the following manner. Um, firstly, I'm firstly I want to try and bust some myths around um, turn it in first and foremost, and then secondly followed by um, focusing on um, useful um, facts. Uh, specifically around um, uh, the similarity uh, report, um, and then lastly, I just I'm just going to briefly touch on um, on typical queries that we uh, that the help desk, uh, the learning technologies help desk receive regarding um, from students um, regarding um, turn it in. All right, so uh, so that is going to be my my approach for this um, for the session. So first we'll go first going to start off with um, busting um, the myths around uh, Turnitin and there are uh, quite a quite a lot and I'm sure that you've heard most of them or all of them already. Um, and the one myth is around plagiarism detection. Um, yeah, if I ask you to Give me an indication whether that is true or not. I'm sure that um, you will all be, and hopefully you'll all be correct, that uh, Turnitin does not, or the main purpose of Turnitin is actually not to detect plagiarism. So if that, if you didn't know that, then um, now you know. <laughs> that is not the main purpose of, of, of Turnitin. Um, Obviously, it compares basically what it does. It, as you already know, is it compares first and foremost compares student papers with with stored papers. And I also would like to add to that um, also um, other resources, um, electronic publications, um, internet um, articles, current as well as archived internet articles, and various other um, electronic um, resources that are linked to the Turnitin service. Um, that is what it does. So first and foremost, it compares um, papers with with resources either stored on Turnitin or linked to the Turnitin um, service. All right. So with that, um, it definitely requires um, judgment um, from from the lecturer's point of view, lecturer or supervisor's um, point of view. So the person or the lecturer needs to still examine or look at the report in context with um, with the assignment or with the with the thesis or the theme of the the document that is um, that is sub uh, submitted. Also, another one that also based on some of the, the um, regular queries that that we receive. Um, is that there's no from a, from the Turnitin po um, point of view is there's no general um, uh, threshold or require requirement regarding a similarity score. Um, so there's no good or bad um, similarity score. So it depends on. Um, so that that's why it is necessary first and foremost to have a look uh, to um, examine the, the the report. All right. And then lastly, um, examining of a report is required to identify plagiarism and any other problems. So potential plagiarism can be uh, plagiarism can be identified 
in a turnitin report um, or a similarity report, as well as a problem in um, academic writing from an academic writing uh, point of view, of course. The second myth that I would like to bust is um, around the similarity score itself. Um, there is a myth that the similarity score, which obviously um, links or ties um, into the, the previous uh, myth, is equal to the amount of plagiarism in a piece of work. In other words, if a 50, if a, a report comes up with 50% um, similarity score, then there's still the perception that um, a student has committed 50% um, plagiarism, which is not necessarily true. All right, so the report the report needs to be examined um, in order to de to determine what why is the um, uh, the report or the similarity score um, so high. All right, it as it says there, it identifies similarity with other stored work on Turnitin's database. Therefore, it, the possibility that it's uh, that it could be high is is likely, um, and term, Turnitin measures similarity once again, um, and not plagiarism. And also, once again, look at the report in more detail. That's the only way to determine um, what exactly the report is saying. Myth number three, once a paper has been submitted to turn it in, it is in the database forever. That is not necessarily the case. If you wondered about that. I've wondered about that. Um, students can request uh, for a paper to be removed under certain conditions, obviously. All right. So if a student um, has copied work, just to use an example, copied the work of another student or a former student um, and realize, um, realizes that he or she will get caught out um, and ask for it to be removed, that is obviously um, uh, a dilemma, so uh, so there are certain conditions and, and with the approval, um, always with the approval of the lecturer or the supervisor um, involved. All right, and before I get to the house um, request to lead, lead papers from, turn it, um, from the Turnitin database um, is requested, um, some of the conditions, if I can just um, mention one or two, um, we uh, quite on a, reg uh, on a regular basis, especially before a thesis is uh, due for submission um, to be submitted for examination. For example, um, students, when students submit their uh, final uh, final draft um, through turn it in and discovers that it that a high similarity has been picked up. Um, with a previous um, submission from the same student, but obviously um, via a different Turnitin link, then um, those are some of the requests or the conditions um, um, that um, we, we are um, requested to remove or to request Turnitin, because we can't do it on our side. We have to uh, request Turnitin to remove um, papers. Um, from the from the database. So obviously there's a clash. A previous draft of the same student's work um, was submitted through a different link, and um, the student then brings that. Normally the procedure would be brings that to the attention of the um, the lecturer or the or the supervisor, and then either the the, the lecturer or the student um, with the lecturer copied in um, request that the paper. Um, be removed from Turnitin's database so that a new and updated report can be um, generated um, for the last and, and final version or draft of the thesis or um, document. Right, so that is one of the, the conditions. All right, and obviously um, requests for those um, who don't know are logged um, to us, uh, the learning technology support team. Um, and it should include the paper ID um, or the submission ID, as it's also known. So in order to uh, obtain the submission ID is um, located next to the submission on the Turnitin link um, under, the, under the heading Turnitin paper ID, also referred to as submission ID. So without that, we, are, we can't request or Turnitin won't 
um, approve a request to uh, remove a paper permanently from their database. All right, and also once um, it, uh, a paper has been removed, it can't be obviously it's it's permanent, um, so it can't be restored. All right. Myth number four: uh, students. Student copyrights are compromised in some way by turn it in. Just to bust uh, that myth, I think that myth has been busted um, um, a few years already. I think um, initially when uh, when turn it in started, I think there were a lot of concerns around um, copyrights um, in terms of turn it turn because turn it in um, when papers are stored to turn it in's database, then um, um, yeah, there were questions as to um, how safe is it, um, and um, what are the the the, cop the risks around copyright. Um, so, just to give you an idea um, around copyright, um, from the United States uh, courts uh, uh, appeals, um, it was um, judged that the 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 purpose of um, of of Turnitin, the Turnitin service um, is um, compares to that of fair use. Um, it's it's uh, fair use, so it's it, it, it's it's fine. Um, so students and and Turnitin makes it clear that um, students still own the copyright of the original work, and um, ownership is therefore not um, relinquished, and um, and also and and you will. Some of you may have um, experienced it when a lecturer discovers a similarity um, of uh, with a with another student, for example, um, of another from another institution or even another class. Um, then the student then uh, there's an option. It's called a paper view request option that is available as part of the Turnitin um, functionality or report functionality. Then you can request. Um, the facilitator or instructor um, on that course where that paper, uh, that similarity was um, submitted through um, to view that paper. And that is one one example of how strict Turnitin is. So it's 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 uh, so permission needs to be granted um, by the instructor of the similarity to view that paper. All right, so Turnitin holds um, copyright. Um, in very high regard. Also, just another mention about uh, US court rulings regarding the archiving of student papers to assess the originality of newly submitted papers constitutes a fair use, just to link to the, the previous point that I was trying to make, fair use under the US Copy, uh, Copyright um, Act. Um, you are also welcome to visit uh, turnitin.com, the turnitin.com website, and also the um, specifically um, with regards to um, around this matter, um, the privacy and security page for more information. They will, on that page, you will um, see a lot of information um, and reference to these two um, court rulings um, specifically around um, copyright. But that brings us to myth number five. Papers in the Turnitin database are, e are easily accessible by others, so privacy is not protected, which is also a myth, because Turnitin has um, very sophisticated um, security um, measures. They have secure, uh, very sophisticated security measures uh, measures put in place um, to ensure that nobody can access or hack into their um, the repositories, right? And so far, um, security so this security system has never never been breached. So that is some peace of mind around that. Are there any questions? Um, yes. Do you want to entertain questions now? Um, yes, please. Sure. Okay. So How there was one. Yeah. One from Timbalani. So yes. I'm working on my mini thesis and mm -hmm. I'm in need of that turn it in before I submit the paper to my supervisor. Can I be granted mm -hmm. that? So I take it is that you mm -hmm. delete the, 
the, the, the paper and turn it in. I take it it's that. Okay, it's um, I see two possible um, answers if I if I heard correctly. Um, you want to act, you want to submit before you, you want to make it uh, a submission before the final submission. Is that, did I understand correctly? I want to, yes, I want to, I'm not sure if uh, my, uh, if the percentage is high or low, but I want to check okay. if yes. there's no similar index also. Okay. All right. I was actually getting to that, um, to, to where you can actually submit, but that's fine. Um, you can, you can do that. Um, in fact, the, the library um, has initiated a, a turn it in um, sandbox, refer it uh, to as a sandbox module it, on SunLearn. Um, it's called Information Skills Training Turn It In, um, where you can actually test or submit your, um, your thesis uh, to check it against Turnitin's database. Um, without its storing being stored on Turnitin's database. So just checking without storing it on um, on Turnitin's database. Um, I will provide you with a with a link. Um, if you are if you regularly log on to Sunlearn, you can also do a search. Just search for information skills training Turnitin. Um, if it um, if the when the course comes up um, in the results. And you click on it. You um, it is set up to um, to, to self enroll yourself into the course. All right, but I'll I'll also make that de um, detail um, yeah. available to you. Yeah. At the Maybe end of this, I want to ask a question here about if my my work is. Um, who's that? Um... Well, so there's a um, um, Marvis, there's a question from Ms. Foster. What is the yes. difference between similarity and plagiarism? Similarity is just similar to, um, um, the uh, um, similar text found between two sources or two documents. Um, obviously, plagiarism is um, um, using someone else's work without um, referencing um in in basic terms so in in in, in turn it in um in turn it in terms similarity is basically highlighting similar text in similar order between two or more sources or two or more documents does that answer your question miss foster is that does that answer your question no she's not responding okay then i think marvis okay. the next question from mr Rabella, i think um sort of uh, i don't know if it ties in with this one he asked so if you have a similarity index of 50 percent, for example and the similarities yes. culminate from the words or phrases that are commonly used in one's field for example words like ob obesity vascular systems etc mm. or phrases um no wait it jumped now uh, or phrases such as obesity in, in, um, is, a in, is a pandemic. How mm -hmm. does one overcome such? Because I don't think there are any other words or phrases to mm -hmm. use in the place of such. Mm. Yeah. All right, Turnitin has a functionality uh, built in. Um, from a student point of view, it's, it's a temporary ex um, refinement that you can do to your report so that it excludes those type of um, common similarities, um, uh, subject terminology um, and so forth, um, where you can, you can actually filter it um, out. Um, for example, small matches, there's a small matches um, option built into the Turnitin functionality that allowed, allows you to exclude sources in the source list that are below um, a certain Threshold. So, for example, if there are um, a lot of those similarities that are less than one percent, for example, um, then you can you can filter you can filter that out. Uh, there are two ways um, that that it can be done um, from the person who sets up the the Turnitin link, which a student um, submits. It can be done by default. So, for example. Um, you, they can a, a lecturer can set it up so that it by default excludes anything that's less than one percent or three percent even, um, especially in a 
in, in, in the thesis, in the case of a thesis, um, which is a large um, document, um, where those type of um, common um, similarities or, or similar text um, can be um, uh, common. Um, so the, the, there's that option. And then uh, from the student point of view, students can also exclude those texts um, or those those words um, using the, uh, the the small the exclude small matches uh, functionality, um, uh, but it's 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 temporary uh, temporary exclusions which affects the overall score. So obviously, if you exclude those sources, then the overall score is then adjusted according to the exclusions. Um, there's also the other one is um, bibliography. Um, for example, or, uh, the bibliography can also be excluded, and that can also sometimes make a significant, um, have a significant um, reduction or um, in the in the overall similarity uh, score percentage. Sometimes turn it in would even indicate um, that, for example, fifteen percent of the um, overall similarity score is. Um, in the in the bibliography, so turn it in would normally indicate that. Um, yeah, so small matches uh, or small sources and uh, bibliography, and also the other the third one is um, quoted um, text. So um, any direct quotes um, can also be excluded, or there's a filter to act, to enable uh, the exclusion of direct quotes if it is obviously in, in quotations. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Morris, I'm going to take the follow up question from Ms. Foster and then I think the others we can um, maybe do later on. Um, so yes. Ms. Foster was asking about the difference between similarity and plagiarism and she just said that um, I suppose my question is then does similarity become plagiarism at a certain percentage? No, okay. not necessarily. Um, that's why I've um, just just referring back to what I said earlier. The percentage itself, looking at the percentage itself, without really looking at the of uh, the type of similarities or um, uh, yeah similarities that that turn it in highlighted, doesn't necessarily constitute plagiarism. It could be um, it could be. For example, the um, uh, the example of earlier about um, uh, terminology, um, common um, uh, subject uh, terminology, and any other common phrases that form part of a specific um, um, area, subject um, area. So, yeah. So, so it, it doesn't necessarily. You have to. That's why you have to look at the report and not just at the percentage. Um, because the percentage, or and and that's why um, at the beginning the first myth is that Turnitin does not measure or detect plagiarism. It detects similarity um, because it helps the lecturer or the evaluator or the supervisor to identify um, problem uh, potential problem areas within a piece of text. So that's the main main focus of of Turnitin. All right. OK, shall we move yeah. on? Yes, we can move on. Thank you. Great stuff. All right, now we shall have a look at the feedback studio. Um, basically, the, the report view um, of um, Turnitin. And we will be looking at some of the following. Um, yeah, before we get to that, before we get to the actual report, just a few um, common or use, useful facts around um, the type of documents that are or that can be submitted um, to, to turn it in and um, yeah, and for which reports or similarity reports will be generated. Um, first and foremost, the, uh, the file size uh, that turn it in um, accepts is up to well, it's just under a hundred megabytes. I don't think any thesis will come to uh, come to that size. Um, yeah, um, normally I think even including um, multimedia or graphics um, as well. Um, a minimum of twenty words uh, or document should have a minimum of twenty uh, words before turn it in 
uh, generates a similarity report. Anything less than that, it won't. It will just be, um, I think the similarity report will just be zero because it's, uh, it's less than 20, uh, 20 words and then less than 800 pages. All right, so just bear that in mind. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm um, showing that or um, highlighting that is if, for example, your thesis, um, if the thesis is uh, exceeds that um, those restrictions, then obviously Turnitin won't generate a report, all right? Even if it's in the correct um, format, um, accepted format, um, it won't generate a report if it exceeds those requirements. Then with regards to file types, Turnitin will only accept file types that can generate similarity reports. And these are a few of those file types. Um, obviously a Word document, standard Word document, um, HTML document um, even, um, and those are the other other um, formats that Turnitin um, accepts or that um, Turnitin can generate um, uh, some lab reports for. Obviously, the uh, the reason, um, the main reason with um, behind the the, um, the document types or the file types is obviously if it if there's any uh, f strange formatting that clashes with the turning algorithm, then obviously a, a report won't be generated. So just take that in, uh, keep that in mind. Obviously, PDF documents, so word documents, plain. Um, text documents converted to PDF, Turnitin will um, obviously ge uh, will generate a report for it. Um, however, if a document is, an entire document is sca a scanned document that is converted to a PDF, Turnitin won't be able to uh, generate a similarity report um, for the reason because it's, uh, main reason because it is not plain text and turn it in then um, obviously regards it as an image um, and turn it in does not do the turn it in al algorithm does not do text recognition um, um, on on images so just keep that um, in mind so no scanned documents um, will receive a similarity um, report okay and you can also visit um, this, I'm just including that for more detail around um, um, file types. Maybe just one or two more file types that I didn't mention there, but you can find at that link is also password protected documents. Turnitin won't generate a report for that. And also documents with, um, with macros um, in it um, as well. So just go and check on um, Turnitin on this link um, or on turnitin.com. Um, for the file types that turn it in does not um, generate a similarity report for. Okay. All right, so we can move along. All right, so next we will be looking at um, interpreting the uh, the report. So we'll look at a at a report. Um, I'm going to um, show that and show what is um, what is really checked. So I'm just going to do a brief um, overview. Um, on that, then we will be looking at um, how to refine the similarity report, the exclusions that we've just um, spoken about a few minutes ago, as well as um, how to view the match um, breakdown of your matches as well in the report, viewing source details, and one or two other other things. So for that, I'm just going to unshare my presentation and just share with you a, an actual report, very basic report, uh, but nevertheless one. I'd like to use that as an example. What can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, correct. Right, so obviously most of you have seen um, the screen already is familiar to you, uh, which is a turn it in similarity report um, that I've generated 
um, for the purpose of this presentation. Um, so obviously what you see here on the right is your match overview. So these are the matches that were found, each obviously in um, descending order from high to low. The number of, of sources um, where similarities have um, been detected by Turnitin um, were found, detected. So the overall score is 44% or um, yeah. 44 uh, percent and that just once again want to stress that that is not that doesn't necessarily indicate plagiarism it's just um, um, the the overall similarity score um, uh, based on the similarities based on the sources um, below all right so just to confirm that it does not check plagiarism in a piece of work instead um, it will check a student, uh, the student's work, obviously, against the database. And if there are any instances where a student, um, student's writing is similar to um, or matches against one of um, the sources found on the, on the Turnitin database, um, Turnitin flags it for the lecturer to, um, to review. So that is basically what it does. And the Turnitin database um, includes billions um, already of web pages, um, current internet archive um, and archived internet um, articles, uh, repository of students, uh, documents and works, uh, and a collection of, of various documents, uh, periodicals, journals and publications. So yeah, one has to take that into consideration, obviously. All right, and it also, Tenetin also makes it clear that um, that it is that it is natural for an assignment or any document, a thesis, um, whatever it may be, to match against um, some of the, some of the databases because of the um, of of comma phrases and, and, and terminology um, used in those uh, those documents. Um, so if a student uses quotes and referenced it correctly, there will be instance where, instances where, where there will be um, a match, where Turnitin picks up a match. Um, so similarity score simply highlights any um, potential, like I've said earlier, problem areas in student's paper. And the idea that the, uh, the idea behind or the purpose behind Turnitin is to identify those problems and obviously address it as well. All right, so it's not used um, um, for punitive measures, but obviously it can help um, in that in that regard um, as well. But the the main purpose of Turnitin is to um, to educate, and and you will also see when you visit their website, um, they offer a lot of webinars, um, workshops. They have on YouTube. They have a channel on YouTube as well where they educate um, lecturers, um, researchers, and, and students on, on Turnitin and, and on, on integrity, academic integrity, um, and writing as well. So that is the main purpose. It's not to punish, but actually to educate. Um, all right, and it, uh, they also make it clear instructors can use it as a tool within the review process to make their own determination if any academic misconduct um, has occurred. So. There you have it. Um, all right. In terms of refining your um, your 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 report, um, if you, for example, obviously the the reality is, and I've, I've, I did mention earlier that the, the the similarity score is not the determining factor um, that should be used. Um, uh, whether a student um, has either committed um, plagiarism or is not a good writer or, or needs assistance with um, with writing, um, but we do um, receive um, queries now and then from um, students or lecturers regarding what is an acceptable um, percentage. All right, so. There are it it it's um, there are departments or lecturers even that have um, that don't accept, for example, um, one comes to mind that does not accept uh, a, a similarity report um, that is more than twenty five percent, for example. 
um, there are others that don't accept more than um, what is it 15 you know, 15 20 and 25 seem to be <laughs> seems to be the um, um, the the general um, requirements for alternating um, reports so <clears throat> also just check that with um, with the lecturer or the um, or with the supervisor, what is it? What is regarded as acceptable, and and and, and why? Obviously, before the time, um, so that that is also something to keep um, in mind. But nevertheless, just want to show you the um, the filters that I was talking about earlier. Um, so when you click on the on the filter icon, this is where you can exclude um, sources, for example. So I can exclude quotes if there are any. I don't think in this document I can exclude the bibliography. I didn't include, unfortunately, your bibliography in this one, but this is where you would exclude the bibliography. And just on that, um, how Turnitin detects <coughs> the bibliography is um, the text that appear directly under, underneath um, um, the headings, bibliography, uh, reference list, references, and a few others as well. And obviously the, uh, the Turnitin algorithm is set up in that way to obviously identify uh, the the format of um, of a reference, um, a, a, bibli a bibliographic um, reference, as well. So that is how it detects um, the bibliography, and um, also in terms of of um, of number of words, you can also commonly use phrases that um, appear um, in in sequence. You can also exclude other based on words or um, percentage. So if you want to exclude anything that is less than 1%, this, um, for example, then you can also do that. So if I do that and click on apply changes, let's see if there are any. Okay, so nothing, everything is above. If I change that maybe to 2%, oh, sorry. I think the lowest is 2% in this particular report. Okay, not even, let's see, three, maybe. It's a bad document to use for this review. Okay, at least. So less than, the, anything less than 3%, it, ex, it excludes now from the report. And just to mention, um, just to reiterate this, um, from a student's point of view, it's it's a temporary report. So after, um, so it won't won't stay. When you go out of the report view, it, it reverts back to the original um, percentage, right? But this is just to indicate and maybe to um, to help um, maybe plead your case with um, with the lecturer um, or or the supervisor as well, or to point it out, uh, point those type of um, um, similarities out to the to the lecturer um, or the super, or your supervisor, right? Okay, then the next one that I want to show you is the breakdown, so the match breakdown. So if you go to the source, you can see a breakdown of that source. So everywhere where that um, so if you click on the breakdown um, sources, or underlying sources, as it's also known as, it will take you to the place in the document, in your document where it um, picked up those similarities as well. You can also use the arrows on the right and on the left um, for those who haven't um, are not familiar with the report view um, also it indicates where it also pops up the um, uh, the source where it was um, where, where the source was located uh, in this case it's um, it was submitted it's uh, linked to a source that was submitted or a document that was submitted at that university and it indicates the date as well when you click on this link and it's obviously if it's if you don't if you are not authorized to um, have access to to those resources, uh, um, whether you're uh, well, if you're a student, you won't in any case. But for lecturers, lecturers can actually request um, have the option of a pay per view request. So turn it in then 
emails on behalf of the requester, um, the instructor or lecturer um, at that institution to request whether um, he or she would um, be willing to grant permission to um, to me to uh, to view that paper to see the, the similar to compare the, the that paper with um, the paper of this institution um, to see if there are any um, potential plagiarism or whatever the case may be. All right. OK, the next one. Is to view um, sources associated with a paper that is basically yeah that is basically what I've just um, shown you now. The other one is to view the source details. If I go back to go back. If I click there. Okay. Right. So let's go back. So all sources. And if you go to all sources, you can also check on full source view. So it will show the similarity in line with your text on the right. Just taking a while to load. Okay, let's try again. Okay, let's, let's go back, back to all source view again. Let's choose another one and see if that opens. Okay, but basically what it is showing on this side, so if I click on full source view, it's supposed to show me, oh, there we go. It's supposed to show me the similarity that was picked up in line with my text on this side. So there it just highlights the, the text, the similarity that was picked up and um, yeah, in, the text and the similarity that was that was found on that side. All right. OK, so I'm just going to yeah, that is what the similarity It just might be just one last thing on this. Uh, we are running out of time, so I'm just going to show one uh, just one last thing. Um, and that is the. Well, besides that, when you go to the download option, um, you can download the report um, in the current view, right? Um, so it will download a PDF version of the report. Um, just the only difference is that the uh, similarities, instead of um, displaying in the same way, it will display all the sources, all the all the sources at the bottom of the of the document um, and also another um, useful uh, document or document that is um, sometimes um, required by the supervisor um, is a is the digital receipt it's basically just a a receipt exactly what it is a receipt of um, of that you have submitted it through turn it in and you can if some supervisors before they go and check themselves or look at the report they want the student 
to send a digital receipt to them or email it to them as proof that they have submitted it. And then the uh, supervisor will, will have a look afterwards. Some supervisors prefer the um, the current view download. So basically the, the, the PDF version of this report that you have to email to that person. And that is usually sometimes not the entire doc because what it will do, it, it downloads the entire document, uh, the entire thesis, for example, with the similarity report, which, which is, yeah, uh, it's quite a, quite a large document, obviously. Um, so what you can do is once you've downloaded it and you open it, in the um, PDF view on the left, uh, the navigation uh, panel on the left, you can um, specifically select the the bookmark um, for uh, for the similarity report, and then print only print um, or uh, print it to um, a document or save it as a PDF document. Uh, only the uh, the similarity report and send that uh, to the the lecturer or the supervisor. The other, um, maybe just one last thing regarding the report. Um, should you want to, I've already shown it to you um, earlier, but you can also obviously see the, the submission ID or the, or the turn it in ID here if you need to request um, a paper to be deleted from the turn it in database. But I'm just going to unshare my screen. Just go back to my PowerPoint. All right, I'm back on my PowerPoint. I hope you can see my PowerPoint now. Okay. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. All right, so I'm just going to finish off. looked at the myths and we've looked at some general facts around Turnitin, uh, the Turnitin report or the similarity report. <clears throat> so just lastly, I want to end off um, the session with looking at some of the queries that we um, receive um, around Turnitin. Um, the one query is, this is also com a common one and one that was asked already. Um, how can I get access to turn it in if my if my lecturer doesn't um, did not make make it available to me? <clears throat> so first and foremost, pardon me. Pardon. I'm suffering from a bit of throat um, infection. It's a minor one, hopefully. Um, how can I access turn it in? I've already mentioned that um, that the library has a module um, or a sandbox module on Sunlearn um, that you can um, use to test your work before submitting the final draft. Uh, there are three turn it in links on there, each with a different um, filter setup. The one link um, includes every, will include everything in the report, so the bibliography quotes and everything um, else. Um, the other one will exclude the bibliography and the other, the third link excludes um, all possible filters. So bibliography, quotes um, and small sources um, as well. So you can test, you can test the document um, against all, all of those if you, if you uh, want to. Um, and the important thing, it does, on, does not save or store documents on Turnitin's database. So it's its main purpose is just to check against Turnitin's database. So you can safely check on that um, document, um, on that through one of those links. The other que um, general questions that we receive is, I would like to request for my paper, and that, that question we've also uh, covered already. Uh, so send a request to us, uh, learnhelp.sun.ac.za is our online service desk. Or you can send an email to learn at sun.ac.za as well, and it will automatically be recorded on our service desk as well. Turn it in report pending, what to do, some of the um, questions. So it depends. There are various factors that can uh, that can um, cause that. Uh, the one is that you've resubmitted more than three times already. So normally, 
on to, uh, by default, you can resubmit on the same link. It will overwrite the previous submission. Turnitin allows you three resubmissions without a long delay. Um, after the third resubmission, um, your document can pend up to uh, 24 hours because that is obviously it obviously um, uh, 24 hours when the, the, the Turnitin database um, is updated with new um, with new submissions. So it will include any new submissions um, that are submitted within that 24 hour uh, period as well. And if if it's not that, if that is not the case, it could be something else. It could be the document itself is um, could be um, the document, the format formatting in the document could be problematic, or there could be a break in service on the tenant inside. Normally, I would say wait. Um, if you haven't resubmitted more than three times, uh, wait another day and see what happens. Um, if nothing happens, then obviously log a call um, with us. Why did my similarity score percentage increase after I had submitted? Uh, after I've submitted, um, normally what happens is well, the one scenario is if after the when the due date is reached on a turned in um, link, uh, what happens is that all reports, all documents, all, all similarity reports are refreshed uh, to take into consideration any. Um, um, recent or latest um, submissions or additions to the to the database, so it takes um, that in, into consideration. Sometimes it can increase um, um, significantly, or sometimes um, maybe with one percent to or or two up to two or th um, uh, percent. Last one, I think. Sunland does not allow me to submit my assignment because of turn it in problems or issues and the, uh, the response I got was that I will be assisted with your submission or helped with turn it in. I just added that one in there. Um, if someone, if you encounter any issues with um, submitting on turn it in for whatever reason, uh, technical issues, um, we are not allowed to submit on behalf of, um, that is just a disclaimer, we are not, um, that we are not uh, allowed to submit on behalf of a student um, unless obviously instructed by a um, um, by a lecturer or, or supervisor for whatever the, the case may be. Right, so rather contact. So what I want to say with that is rather contact the the lecturer, responsible lecturer or supervisor, um, with reg with regards to the problem before consulting um, with us. All right, and just. Um, just our contact details once again. I'm adding the contact details of the uh, postgraduate office and the writing lab there as well, uh, just for your information. Right, and that is my story. Are there any questions? Um, hi, Moz, thank you. Um, there was a lot of questions, but I think I don't know if it's your colleague, uh, Ms. Sikhala answered most of them. OK, um, but there was one uh, right at the beginning. I'm I am continuing on a topic I did for masters, but now but now I'm continuing on it with my PhD. Please mm -hmm. advise. OK, so yeah, um, that is also a scenario or a typical question that we that we receive. So, yeah. So I assume, obviously, the the fear is that it will it will obviously pick up um, any similarity um, similarities with the master's thesis. Um, if it's yeah, I, I would I would say my first um, my first advice would be obviously to uh, if it's a different uh, supervisor to bring it to the to that supervisor's um, attention. And also, I think that yeah, I think the best in, uh, advice that I can can give is to consult with uh, with the supervisor for the for the uh, for the PhD um, to on on that um, and um, and take it from there. Um, I would say, but obviously in consultation um, with uh, with a supervisor, one could um, 
probably exclude certain certain sources or take that um, into consider, uh, consideration uh, when submitting a, a draft of the uh, the PhD um, thesis mm -hmm. or dissertation. Yeah. Uh, just for the sake of time, maybe we should just um, go one or two. What is a bad score? Um, high percentage. What what is good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I've said, it's um, um, yeah, obviously the high. I, I would say my 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 answer is always the higher, the more um, concern. Um, the higher the percentage, uh, the higher the the. the the chance or, or possibility of, of of concern, but obviously you have to take um, uh, a lot of things. You have to take uh, a lot of things in, uh, into consideration. Um, obviously, to look at the report first and foremost, and also um, if nothing has been filtered out, to obviously look at that as well to address that. So, for example, if the bibliography, if you find out, oh, well, one of the first things to look at is. Is is the was the bibliography um, uh, included in the in the report? If so, um, what is the bibliography? What is the per percentage um, that um, that the bibliography contributed to the overall uh, similarity score? I would say that is a that is a, a starting point by looking at that, and also quoted material uh, or quotes mm. um, as well. If the, those are also not excluded from the report to also look at that. So yeah, f my advice would be from a technical point of view, look at look at the filters um, mm -hmm. at first and, and, and work from there. But um, overall, the important thing is look at the report and see what Turnitin has highlighted um, in that report. OK. Thank you, um, Morris. Uh, most of the uh, questions were answered by Ms. Sichela in the chat, so people can just um, consult the chat there um, for most of the answers are there. Um, as indicated, this um, um, session um, are recorded, so it will be made available afterwards for all participants. So, Morris, thank you. Um, in that regard, I don't see any other questions in the chat um, that was not already answered. Um, so yeah, people are leaving for another season. So, but um, thank you for the participants for, for joining us and for Morris. Thank you very much for your time and availing yourself on this important topic and issue. Um, so thank you very much. Um, keep well and take care, everybody. And thank you, Morris, thank again. Thank you. Keep well, everyone.